Hello and welcome again to Money Tips. This is Charles Kelly bringing you money tips to help you save, earn, invest, accumulate and enjoy more money. I run this free podcast uh, five days a week to help people become more financially aware, to improve their financial situation and you know be happier about money. So thanks for tuning in on, on Facebook Live and on my podcast, which you can find on iTunes and Stitcher. Now, I was at the gym earlier today, believe it or not, uh, trying to burn off those Christmas pounds. And I noticed that it was uh, you know, quite full, more, more people there than usual. I just go during the day when it's quiet. But today it was like a lot of people there, a lot of new faces I saw. Well, of course, we know that in January, a lot of people join the gym. They want to lose weight. They want to get fit. And you know it's a peak month, isn't it, for, for January. And the, the gyms have special offers and that sort of thing in January. But unfortunately, many of these members will have dropped out within a few months and, and that's sad uh, you know because they, they perhaps get it get, get enthusiastic about it for the first few weeks and then you know it becomes less and less they start going twice a week then once a week then you know maybe once every couple of weeks once a month and then it's it's tailing off towards the end of the year isn't it so we, we know that and it, it's really the things we do every day that count not the things we do once in a while or or after Christmas when we put on a bit of weight right just like, you know, you wash every day, you brush your teeth every day. You don't do it, you know, now and again, you, you'll do that. It's the things you do every every day. And, and that's the same with, with fitness. And, you know, if you really want to lose weight and, and live a healthier lifestyle and, and be healthier and fitter, you have to change your habits. You know, if you want to get, you know, burn off less calories and, and, and eat less, you, you know, you've got to change that, that habit. You can't just be, say, going to the gym for a little while and then getting back to eating the wrong foods and, and not doing any exercise and so on. You know, I always notice that people drive to the gym and then walk five miles on the treadmill. Can't understand it. Why not, you know, walk to the gym, jog to the gym, cycle to the gym, save electricity from the, uh, from, from the, the treadmill and, and use their car list, save the planet. But anyway, that, that's just another little fun thing of mine. Um, now, as I said, if you want to be healthy, you've got to change your lifestyle. Similarly, if you want to be financially healthier and, and you know get out of debt, be financially free, then you need to change habits as well. But these are not eating and, and, and drinking habits. These are your spending and lifestyle habits. Yeah. Now, we talked recently about banks ramping up overdraft charges and people living on credit cards for, for, for years and years. So you've got to get out of these habits. And just like eating healthily or training, uh, money management is a, is a lifelong process. If, you, if you're managing money and you, you're, you're keeping on top of things, but you stop it for a couple of months, then you know, your, your, your finances will fall into disrepair. Just like if you are currently fit or you're currently at a certain weight, but you, you stop training, you stop eating the right food, you stop, stop those habits that got you there, then you know, your, your body will soon put on weight and you're, you're, you won't be so healthy. And it doesn't take that long. You know, experts say that if you're, you're training and you know, you're you're building those muscles, it only takes a few weeks of not training and not doing those exercises and your, your muscles can, can deteriorate very fast, especially as you get older. And it's the same thing with, with finances. It's called, you know, it's in other words, it's don't let the grass grow under your feet, as, as the saying goes. You know, you've got to keep on top of your finances as well as your health, as well as your relationships and other things in life, your work, your, your, you know, dealing with your children, all of these things you've got to keep on top of them. Otherwise, as Jim Rohn used to say, the weeds will take the garden. Now, money management, I, I've written about this extensively in my book, Yes, Money Can Buy You Happiness. And I actually give you a system in here. Uh, one, of, one of the systems, actually several systems, one of the systems is the, the three R's of money management formula. And in there, we talk about uh, the three R's, which are read, record and revise. Read and review all of the things in your, read your bank statements, read, read things relating to your mortgage and your credit cards and everything. Read loan agreements before you sign them. Revise them. Revise the credit cards. Look for, for better deals in credit cards. Look for better mortgage deals. Revise things. And finally, record. And I'm going to go on to that in a second. Record income and expenditure. Because I also go into something called the, the Smart Money Manager. Uh, S-M-A-R-T, the Smart Money Manager system. And, and one of those, the smart, you know, spend wisely, manage your money, accumulate wealth over time, read and review your finances on a regular basis and track your income and expenditure. 
And that's what I want to talk about now. That's just one of them, the T in, in tracking your uh, expenditure and income on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. Yeah, as long as you're tracking it and you're keeping it in a track of it. Now remember that education is key to a successful financial life. We know that as kids, we go to school from five to 16 or 18 or sometimes 21, you know, decades in school. And yet most students leave school knowing little or nothing about finances. And that's why they're, they're, they're hoodwinked into the bank to, to taking out more credit cards because, oh, you need to build your credit score, don't you? Uh, and, you know, for us later on to give you a mortgage secured on a property. So we'll give you this unsecured credit card now so you can build your so-called credit score. So people are, are leaving school and university with virtually no uh, financial knowledge or, or any, they don't know anything about money. They don't know how mortgages work. They, they don't realise that, you know, you take a credit card, it's all very well, but, you know, you're going to pay that back with interest many times over. They just don't think about it. They think, oh, you look on a credit card statement and it says um, balance. Let's say you, you, you've got a 10,000 limit, which is a lot of money to give to somebody. You know, here's a 10,000 pound limit on a credit card. And so your balance is a thousand pounds. It says balance interest. You think, well, that's not very much. It's only a, you know, a few pounds. And then it says available to spend. Nine thousand pounds. It's such a nice thing. Spend. Spend's a nice word, isn't it? Save is like, oh, you're depriving me of something. But spend. Everyone wants to spend. So it says on the card, on some of the statements, anyway. I've got available to spend nine thousand pounds. Isn't that isn't that tempting you? It should. I mean, it should really say available to to go more into debt. You can go nine thousand pounds more into debt. But it wouldn't say that, would it? You know, here's nine thousand pounds. You can go further into debt. You can spend further years paying this money off. So people are, what I'm saying here is in, in, in a nutshell is that people are leaving school with little or no financial education. And when I was a financial advisor, you know, I did a lot of courses and sat, sat exams. And even if you do a, a very basic financial, and, and then you will start to become a, more financially aware and you'll see what's going on. Watch TV shows like Martin Lewis's show. Um, he's the guy that started that, that website, um, I don't know what it was, Go Compare, or one of those comparison sites. He made a fortune from that. But he does a very interesting TV show where he, he looks at basic finances and, and speaks in, in normal language. So watch out for his shows. You can catch them online. I think it's on ITV. A very good show on the radio is the BBC Money Box show, which you can probably find on the BBC Sounds app. Um, that, that's probably the only show I know on TV or radio that goes in-depth into things like pensions or uh, pension rights and and mortgages, but in depth, they bring on experts. It's a bit dry. It's not as entertaining as as Martin Lewis, but it's the only show I know that goes into fund manager charges. More, it's more in depth, but you, you'll soon pick it up. They they explain it very well. So I recommend uh, BBC Radio's Money Box. I mean, at very least, keep a record of your income and expenditure. Now you can do this on a spreadsheet. You can do this on one of the many apps there are on your on your smartphones or on on on, on a laptop or a computer. Or you can even use a good old notebook and pen, right? Just write down what did you spend today, what did you you, you earn today, what what's come in, what's gone out, and you'll be amazed just from that. And and also look at your your regular payments that go out by standing order, or direct debit straight out of your bank account and your credit card as well. And look, look and then look, and then you'll see, you know, where are you this month? You know, can you afford? Are you going to run out of money at a certain period in the month? Well. It, then, then you'll know from from your 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 record, and then you'll be able to do something about it, rather than you know running out of money and going into overdraft territory where the banks are now going to charge you forty percent, four zero, forty percent for it for for an overdraft, and and if you listen to my episode uh, a day or so ago, you can find out a bit more about that. But it, it's it's a complete rip off when the banks can can get money from you and 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 pay you a quarter percent on your savings. And then lend it out, you know, 40, 50 times more uh, to, to you on, a, on an overdraft. But the point, the key is not to get into overdraft territory and not to get into a situation where you're living on credit cards and juggling credit cards and, you know, trying to pay off one with an interest free deal and going over here. Or, the, by the way, they say interest free, but they charge you a 2% fee. And, and, you know, you're not juggling your cards and, and that sort of thing. So that's, that comes with managing your money, and then you won't be, be doing that. And remember that the banks are, are there not to, to help you. They're there to make money. I worked for a bank for many years when I was in financial services, one of the high street banks. 
and they are a money-making machine. That's all they do. They just make money. Every month or two, they have a new campaign. They bring in new posters and, and train the staff. And so, right, this month, we're going to push credit cards. Uh, so everyone that comes in the branch, you say, have you got a, do you need a credit card? Do you need a, a cheaper rate? Would you like to review it? And the next month, it's mortgages. We're going to push mortgages. You know, have you reviewed your mortgage? And this is why when you walk into the branch, you, 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 know, you do something, they say, have you reviewed your mortgage? Would you like to see our mortgage advisor? That's what they're there to do, to sell you products. They don't make money just from people with you know, £10 in their bank. They make money from selling you financial products, from the charges they make on, on, on accounts, and you know, the money that they've got flowing through. The banks, through something called fractional reserve lending, can lend out not just the money they've got on deposit from you and I, they can lend that out you know, 10 times and more. Uh, they can lend money that they haven't got. You and I would probably get arrested for that, but the banks, it's, it's normal practice. Look up fractional reserve lending. You'll be amazed at what goes on. So what I'm saying is um, don't let the banks you know, take your wealth with your credit card because it's all the same. The banks, they own the credit cards and, and, and the whole financial system. They've, they've got us all covered one way or the other. Now, we need banks. Obviously, I, I use banks to borrow money to buy assets, but I don't use banks to, for overdrafts and, and to, to, to buy consumer goods and cars and that sort of thing. Well, sometimes you use uh, car finance, obviously, if it's, if it's cheaper than buying cash. But what I'm saying is use, use that wiser. We all need to borrow money. And you, know, that you can become very wealthy borrowing money, but you can also become very poor borrowing money. You can become wealthy using other people's money to buy assets, but you can also become bankrupt by just not managing your money and, and getting into a situation where you know, your interest payments are more than your net disposable income. And that's, that's what you, you don't want to be in that situation. So, so that's the lesson today. Uh, if, you, if you want to find out more about my book, check it out on Amazon. And uh, it's called Yes, Money Can Buy Your Happiness. I, I took years to write this. I put all my 25 years of knowledge into that. So, so check it out. Check out the Smart Money Manager system. And, and then you will become more financially aware. And, and once, once you've got that awareness and once you've you, you got the picture in front of you of, your, of where your money is going, because it's, it's all in your head, it's all a bit uh, hazy. But if you start writing this down and you, you start you know, looking at where it's going, you'll be far better off and, and it will change your life. The people I saw over the years, uh, probably 90% of people just didn't know what was happening. So where's the money go? I don't know where it went. I, where, how much have I earned in the last 40 years? And I, I'd work it out roughly. Well, you've earned 500,000 in the last 20 years. How much have you got left now? And they say, well, uh, nothing. I've got 50 quid in the account and uh, I've got a big mortgage and that's it. And, and they, where did it all go? And they don't know. And they don't even know what's going out this month and next month. They've got no idea. But the smart people I saw, the people who had money, the people who were happier and, and felt more secure and, and comfortable in their life, they knew exactly what was coming in and what was going out. One guy said to me, yeah, of course I keep a, a spreadsheet. How, how, how could you not live without that? How, how could anybody exist without a spreadsheet? OK, maybe he's an analytical type of person, you know, and, and that's fine. Be a bit analytical. Be like the analyticals that, you know, the accountant types, the, the, the bean counters, if you like. They, they know what's coming in and they know what's going out. And therefore, they're happier. They're more content. You know, if you ask them how much is your mortgage, they'll say it's 500 pounds and 42 P. They'll, they'll, they'll know what the rate is. They'll know what the deal is. They'll know when that deal is going to expire so they can go and get another deal. They're on top of their, their utilities. They know how much they're paying every month for, for gas and electricity. They know exactly when they can go back and start reviewing that contract when that contract has expired. You know, they're changing around from, from gas supplies to and electricity supplies to get the best deals. They are the people on top of things. And there's no reason why you can't be the same. Because if you can save, you know, £50 here, £100 there, £200 there, or £1,000 a year. I mean, I've saved sometimes on a mortgage by changing products £5,000 in a year. I mean, that's incredible amounts of money. People go out to work for that sort of money and, and after tax. So you, you can save this by, by managing your money and keeping on top of the situation. So that's all for now. Thanks for listening. This is Charles Kelly bringing you money tips to help you save, earn, invest, accumulate and enjoy more money. Thanks for listening. Have a great evening.